What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Angelique, just in case you didn't know. And if you are new to this channel, welcome. <laughs> All right, you guys, so today we are going to be talking about my pregnancy experience slash pregnancy advice. So I'm basically going to give you some of my pregnancy experience and then some of the tips that I have. So I kind of thought about it and I was like, I don't know if you guys want to hear 10 months of pregnancy experience. Um, so basically like I know what I could do. I could just put my pregnancy experience in between my pregnancy advice because my pregnancy advice is coming from my pregnancy experience, if that makes sense. I'm gonna get right into this video, but before we do, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, you can hit that notification button. You know, we always talk about stuff over here. Okay. All right, you guys, now we can get right into this video. So I have my drink with me. Please don't mind me. I'm just very thirsty and I'm going to be talking a lot. Um, and then I also have my phone just because I wrote down all the advice that I could think of. Now, if I do miss out on some stuff, I probably would make another video, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so for the first one, it is basically the first thing that you think about when you find out that you're pregnant i mean some people don't think about it because they already know the first question that comes to yourself is am i going to keep the baby or am i not going to keep the baby so i, so I just want to make this clear okay you are 110 percent in control of your body it's your decision all of that now i also want to say if you are thinking about this it is very important to weigh out your options so <clears throat> of course we have keeping the child we have abortion we have adoption so when i say weigh out your options i mean look at your situation and see what best fits you have to find out the real reason why you would want to keep your baby or why you want how you would want to get an abortion if you want to get it um and the reason why i say this is because i don't want you guys to lead into like regretting the abortion when it could have been prevented basically so when i say evaluate your situation just evaluate your lifestyle a lot of times especially when you're young the first thing that you kind of think of is like you know what i might have to get an abortion because i'm so young da, 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 da. but if you have people there to support you or if you are in a good position yourself really think about it now i'm not saying don't do it because it is you 100 percent your choice like i said but i just want to make sure that you don't regret it in the future um, if you are in a good situation and just moving too fast. So that is my first advice. So for me, of course, I kept Zion, as you can tell. Um, it's just something that me, personally, I couldn't do. And then also, I evaluated my lifestyle. I'm 100% independent. Um, I was living on my own. I have my own car and everything like that. So I thought that for me, it would just be very selfish if I were to do that just because I'm not in a situation where I'm not happy with my lifestyle in a way. Like, I know it could always be better, but I wasn't like not happy with it. I knew it would be a big adjustment, you know, becoming a parent, you have more responsibilities and stuff. But I, I just, me personally, me personally, um, I just couldn't do that. I felt like, you know, I could, I can take on this responsibility. Everybody's done it before. There's people younger than me that's done it before. Um, I had close family that was supportive and then Zion's father's whole family was supportive. Um, so I just really didn't see a point of doing something like that. I felt like I would probably do it just because I would say I was young like that would be the like that was the only reason why I would be like oh I did it because I felt like people were judging me because I'm young but to be honest with you who cares about what people think this is your life um, you are gonna take care of your child they're not gonna take care of your child for you so it doesn't really matter what their opinions are so yeah so that's all I'm gonna say about that topic like I said you are 110 percent in control of your body you can do whatever you want to it no shame and if you do do it do not feel shame if you tell someone and they shame you don't feel shame because they don't know your situation and also they wouldn't be the one taking on all that responsibility so if you feel like it's right for you then you do what you feel like you should do that's it okay so that's all i have to say about that um so now we're going to go to the second advice 
so this is kind of what I just said um, do not feel ashamed okay if you keep the baby if you don't if you um, do adoption don't don't feel ashamed another thing that I want to say for all my young parents that do decide to keep um, the baby is there are people out there who be like oh man you're too young what were you thinking this that and the third and you know don't listen to them you know number is just the age okay and to be honest with you you can achieve whatever you want to achieve at any age if you just put your mind to it so if you want to be a bomb parent you will be a bomb parent you just gotta you gotta sacrifice a couple things I'm not gonna lie you're gonna have to sacrifice things um, but you can do that just like an older parent Parent. you know they can be bomb you can be bomb it's just what age is but a number full of shame don't feel discouraged don't feel anything because you know what you're doing you know why you chose to keep your child and you just need to work towards being a better person um, being a good parent and all of that yes you started a little bit earlier but at the end of the day it doesn't mean you're, you're gonna be a bad parent or you're gonna be irresponsible that doesn't mean that now you do have to be more responsible, of course, because now you're bringing a whole human into the world. Um, okay, so another thing is when you find out that you're pregnant and you're ready to tell everybody, make sure you tell management at your job. Now, the reason why I say this is because you want to be covered and you want to make sure that management has an understanding of what's going on. Why are you calling out in the morning because you're sick? Um, why do you have <laughs> mood swings? Because mood swings really do happen when you become pregnant. Um, I swear, your hormones are everywhere. You can't control it sometimes and you want to make sure that your management knows so they have a better understanding of what's going on. Now, if they don't know, it could lead you into being fired because they're like, well, your attitude has changed um, you're not coming into work you leave early stuff like that and then by the time you tell them they would have been like well you should have told us that in the beginning now you don't have to tell the whole office you don't have to tell the whole facility um, and then it will be confidential between you and the managers if you ask for that but I really do suggest you guys do that okay another thing is you need to get your shit together okay so being a young parent or being a parent in general but especially a young parent you have to you have to like i said make sacrifices and also you have to start putting yourself in a position for you and your child you need to get your stuff together financially you need to get your stuff together emotionally you just need to get everything together um this is really important just because time where your child is not here and this is the perfect time for you to start getting things rolling because these eight nine seven months whatever whenever you find out the leftover months that you have it's perfect you can literally think about stuff before the baby comes you don't want to wait until the baby comes because first of all that's a lot you just can't went through birth you have all this stuff in your house you have people coming to see the baby and then now you have to think about f stuff financially you have to think about your emotions and everything like that no you need to think about that before the baby comes so if there is a problem you can fix it before the baby comes so this is what I mean when I say financially if you have a job that is paying you not enough like when I say that I mean like if you have a job that you have and you barely can take care of your own self with that job you need another job so you need to think about that okay so you need to think about oh, okay if I can't take care of myself with this job like 110 percent I need another job because when a baby comes that's an extra human and if I can barely take care of myself with this job how am I going to take care of myself and the baby so you definitely want to think about that and that's that comes financially because you want to make sure you're making enough to support you and your baby if anything were to happen um another thing is i would say that now that you know you found out that you're pregnant you and the baby's father should start saving money you know you guys have a goal of how much you want to save by the end of the pregnancy so you have enough money in savings just in case something happens you could just go into that instead of trying to scrape up something um so that's what i mean when i say financial you want to make sure that everything is together um, I wish that someone would have told me that we did it 
Um, we didn't do it to the full, full extent because we definitely could have saved more money. We did save money, but we could have saved more money. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm telling you guys. So you guys could just start now. If you are thinking about becoming pregnant, you're not pregnant yet, you can start right now as well. Um, you can literally start saving up until when you find out that you're pregnant, you're already ahead of the game. And now when you're pregnant, you keep on saving, the baby will be good by the time he or she comes. Okay, Whew. that's why I brought this drink because I'm running out of breath. All right, the next thing is surround yourself with people that have kids or that are probably pregnant when you're pregnant. And the reason why is I just wanna make a disclaimer first. Do not just erase those people that are not pregnant in your life. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they never been through it, so they just really don't fully understand to the full extent. And that's no bashing or anything to that. Like, you should totally still talk to them and everything like that. But when I say surround yourself by, with people that maybe are parents or pregnant with you, it's just so you can basically grasp, grasp onto that knowledge or have a support um, that's been through it or is going through it with you. That's all I'm saying. Do not erase your friends though. Do not erase your friends. I'm not saying that. Do not erase your friends. Well, I talk to my mom every day, every single day. Ever since she found out, I talk to her every single day. And I tell you, that was like the best thing ever just because whenever I'm like, I don't think that's normal, I will call my mom instead of calling the doctor because you know, you don't want to bother the doctor every single day. And she'll basically be like, yeah, girl, that's normal. Um, or if I'm like, what should I do when the baby comes for this? She had like suggestions. Not saying that you have to listen to them. Um, it's just the fact that they have suggestions. They have experience in what you're about to endure. I talked to Shayla and Renata a lot when I was pregnant. And we were all pregnant at the same time. Of course, we had our gaps. Um, but it was really helpful just because Shayla was the first one. So she had her baby in September. And I had Zion in December. So I could talk to her her about certain things like oh my gosh how was birth just to add some knowledge um, of what I might experience because every delivery is different but if something um, happened to her that will happen to me when I'm like in the delivery room I won't be panicky because I'm like oh, okay I know that this you know happened to Shayla just get information um, and then also I talk to my mom every day like I said um, and that was helpful because she had three kids so she knew like different situations that could be there she gave me advice about my labor and delivery plan um it's just that's what i'm saying you just get extra information from someone that's going through it or it's been through it um so that's that's all i'm saying you guys <sighs> anyways what is the next one okay this one is gonna be kind of hard because in the beginning, it was kind of hard for me when I was pregnant, but I really learned how to do it. And this is try, ooh, my straw almost came out, ooh. All right, and this is try to recognize your attitude and bring it down. Okay, the reason why I say this, because when you are pregnant, you have a lot of emotions. You, you can get ticked off like that. You can get sad like that. You can get happy like that. And you know, to you, you, you don't really recognize how that can affect someone else's emotions and stuff like that just because you're not really realizing that you're doing it. Um, but I do say that when you're upset, you really do know when you're upset. And instead of just getting so upset, try to talk yourself down before that even happens. Like if you feel yourself getting upset, just talk to yourself. So that's what I did. Um, it, was, it was hard in the beginning to like talk myself down, but it will help help I'm telling you so if you feel yourself getting so upset off of something so little and you know it's little talk to yourself I know that sounds crazy but talk to yourself be like for instance I'm gonna talk like I'm talking to myself I was I used to be like this I used to be like angel meek it's okay no don't do nothing don't say nothing just walk away angel meek it's okay just walk away angel meek it's okay just walk away that's how it used to be sometimes it works worked for me sometimes it didn't I'm not gonna lie next one is for the baby daddies this one's for the baby daddies okay for the father of the child for the father for 
the dad for the daddy for all of that. Whatever you want to call the father of the baby, okay? Now, this is for you. And listen closely. The mother of your child is going through a lot right now, okay? She's pregnant, she's stressed, she has a lot of things going on with her emotions, her body's changing. You need to be a little bit more sensitive if you're not already, okay? And when I say this, I mean just be there for her. Don't, don't take things personal. You know she's going through a lot. Talk to her. Tell her that she's beautiful. Tell her that tell her that her bump is amazing. Cause it is. You like that bump is carrying a life that you guys created together. Be there for her because this is a time where a lot of women start to get a little bit insecure because they're just like, oh my gosh, I'm getting big. Pregnant, your emotions is everywhere. You can go from happy to sad in 2.5 seconds. So just go on the roller coaster with her. I know it's annoying, don't get me wrong, like I know. Cause like I always put myself in a male's position. I know it's annoying and I know that it's hard at times to be nice, but I'm telling you, it's she's going through a lot so just try to be as nice as you can try to be there for her even if you guys are not together try to check up on her this is your child as well and she's carrying it so just respect her be there for her put your differences aside and be there for your kid you know what i'm saying um because the kid is inside of her so if you're being there for your kid you're gonna be there for her and that's just it. I know like when you're a young father, you want to do stuff, like you still want to go out and party or do whatever you do. But you have to kind of sacrifice that sometimes or maybe to the full extent, depending on the situation, because at the end of the day, you created something together and you have to be there. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say to you guys. Um, and yeah, that's literally your job. She's doing the big parts of the job. She's carrying the baby. She's delivering the baby. She's going through the emotions. Her body's changing. Um, she's, she's going through a lot. For you to be there and support is not asking for a lot, to be honest. I'm going to be honest. You supporting and respecting and trying to keep positive attitude while she's going through stuff that's not a lot to ask because she is going through a lot i keep saying that but i'm serious be the best father that you can possibly be and i know y'all can do it so yeah all right ladies when you are pregnant you have to drink a lot of water you have to drink i would say about a gallon or close to a gallon a day and the reason why is because it's really good for your baby, it's really good for yourself. So make sure you are drinking water, okay? That's it, that's all I really have to say about that. Make sure you're drinking water, and especially, it'll be good because you'll be in the habit of drinking water um, so much that by the time you your baby and everything like that and you wanna breastfeed, you're already drinking the amount of water that they suggest you drinking anyway. So you have to drink a lot of water when you wanna breastfeed and stuff like that. So if you get yourself in the habit now, then you don't have to worry about it later. All right, let's see, what else? My drink is done. Told you all, I'm thirsty. Um, exercise, so make sure you exercise. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did not really exercise throughout my pregnancy. I exercised towards the end. Okay, so I was in the gym, on the ball, on the treadmill, um, towards the end of my pregnancy. But throughout my pregnancy, I'm not gonna lie, I was eating food, chilling, napping. Um, and yeah, just getting ready for the baby to come. Um, but I really wasn't in the gym. But I do suggest you go to the gym because your snapback will be real. Um, and then also, also they say that it helps with easy delivery. So I don't know if that's true because I didn't work out my whole pregnancy, but you should do it. Because if that, if that is true, that's amazing. Like why wouldn't you want an easy delivery? Um, and also you don't have to be like in the gym lifting weights and all of that. You don't gotta do all of that now. But you can definitely um, 
start walking. We did walk a little bit. Hold up, wait, 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 hold up. I did walk a little bit, just a little, when I was walking my dog and stuff. But like, you should walk around if it's a nice day. Um, or you can go to the gym, go on the treadmill. You don't have to lift up weights. You can do that, but I recommend you talking to your doctor before you start doing all of that, because I've seen pregnant people do that. But talk to your doctor first. But I will suggest you start walking, walking a lot more walking. So when I said drink a lot of water, you also have to eat, okay? And I know this is like, okay, of course you have to eat. No, you have to eat a lot. You have to eat at least five to six times a day. And this is a pretty hard, just because if you're at work and you just don't really have time to eat five times a day, you have to try. Bring little snacks in, bring little meals in that you can go in the corner and eat real fast. Just because your baby is literally taking all your nutrients. Um, and then you also want to feed the baby. So you want to make sure that you you are eating okay so you have to eat like five to six times a day that's what my doctor said I'm not sure what your doctor told you but I know that they told you that you have to eat pretty often so just make sure you do so what I did was I would make food like spinach or something put it in a little container put it in the refrigerator and when I saw that it was like calm at my job I would pop that in the, the microwave real quick and eat it in the corner real quick and it only took about like maybe two to three minutes for me to eat Get granola bars in between. Um, make sure you have breakfast before you go to work. Um, all of that. So just make sure you guys are eating. Okay, so another thing is they are going to, well, my doctor's office did this. I'm not sure if your doctor's office is gonna do it or just automatically do it for you. But there is gonna be a part in the beginning of your pregnancy where they're gonna ask if you wanna do like, I forgot what it's called, but it's basically an ultrasound where they look at everything within the baby, the bones, the heart, the stomach, all of that um, I highly do suggest you guys do that I want to know if your baby's okay and it's growing correctly um, and that is one of the things that you can do to basically find out in early stages so you can prepare yourself if there is something that they're concerned about um, I did it and I gotta say like I'm really glad that I did it and it's really cool to see your baby's spine and your baby's bones and your baby's heart and the veins that go through the heart really cool so I, I totally suggest you do that stretch marks so all my ladies out there I know they say start moisturizing your stomach when your stomach starts itching because you're not supposed to itch your stomach that's how stretch marks can appear and stuff like that me personally I started I started before my stomach started itching just because I wanted to keep it moisturized. I feel like it's best if you start before anyway. Um, so what I used is bio oil. I'm probably gonna put it up somewhere here if you guys don't know what that looks like. You can get it from like CVS, Target, Walmart. So I use bio oil and then also I use this one lotion. I totally forgot what it's called, but I will post it right here. I'll also put links down below of where you can get it. Um, but, it but it really does work. It's really good lotion. Um, and then you can also use organic cocoa butter. So if you don't want to do that lotion, you can definitely do the cocoa butter. So make sure you moisturize. To be honest with you, for me, I got stretch marks literally two weeks before Zion was born. Um, so it all depends when you get your stretch marks. My stretch marks, to me, is not that bad. When I first saw it, though, I definitely thought it was bad. Like, I was like, ooh, but it's not that bad. He was making a lot of noise because he definitely wanted me to hold him. Okay, another thing is you're supposed to eat fruit and vegetables while you're pregnant because it's really good for you and the baby. Um, but I just want to point out, make sure you are rinsing your fruits and vegetables very well. Just because fruits and vegetables have like bacteria and um, little bugs on it sometimes. And um, you can handle it, but your baby can't. Just want to make sure that there's none of that on your fruits and vegetables. Make sure you do smoothies. Like that's one of the easiest ways to get all your fruits and vegetables and stuff and it tastes good. So yeah. Towards the end of pregnancy, your vagina starts to hurt, okay? Um, and when I say this, I mean it, okay? You have a lot of pressure down there. Um, that's when the baby's head is facing down. Um, and yeah, okay? It hurts. Um, and there's really nothing you can do about it. And I do want to let you know that it happens. Okay? So when you are 
deciding a name for your baby make sure it's a name that you like do not, do not feel pressure going with someone else's name and you don't really you're not really fond of it or anything like that and the reason why I say that is because when you become pregnant and when you have a baby you are gonna get a lot of opinions you're gonna get a lot of suggestions um, and sometimes you do feel kind of pressured like oh man like should I do it this way? Think about what you like and what you see for your child. Or listen to those advice and opinions just because, you know, that can help you come up with a better name or a name in general. Um, but if you have a name or anything like that, um, but what I'm saying is like, feel pressure to go with one name if you really don't feel like that is the name for your baby. Um, so go with your instincts about the name and how you feel. Like there will be a connection when you try to find a name where you're like, yes, like I can totally see that for my son or my daughter. So to be honest with you, um, some people like Zion's name, some people didn't, but I really didn't care just because me and Zion's father liked it. And also, one of my coworkers actually came up with Zion's middle name. So like I said, Sometimes people are not going to like it, who cares? And then you have people that actually suggest names that you really do like and that you put into your baby's name. So, like I said, listen to the suggestions and opinions, but you do not have to follow them. That's basically what I'm saying. I have one last advice and then I think we are done. No, two more advice, sorry. All right, so I have two more advice and then we are done. So the second advice is make sure that you go through with everything that you want to do um, within your pregnancy so when I say that do a maternity shoot if you want to do it I know that you're like oh I have 10 months but 10 months goes by really fast you guys like being pregnant goes by really fast the people outside the pregnancy it doesn't go as fast for them but it definitely goes fast for you so make sure you do everything that you want to do while you're pregnant make sure you send an appointment up so you don't back down or you won't forget or anything like that if you are pregnant you have pregnancy brain that's another thing that I should talk to you guys about Pregnancy brain is real. You start to forget stuff. You start to forget if you close the refrigerator door. You for, you start to forget um, where you left your key. You just put them down like three seconds ago. It's real. Like you really do forget. You know, it's like your brain is kind of like fried in a way. So don't be scared if you realize like, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting everything? It's literally it literally comes to pregnancy. So I just want to put that out there. <laughs> um, but yeah. But yeah, so just make sure you set up stuff because you will forget. Make sure you do alarms. Make sure you have appointments of things that you want to do within your pregnancy. All right, so the last thing that I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna cover his ears for this. I'm gonna be talking about SEX. Now, when it comes to that, you can do it um, when you are pregnant. Uh, I do say that when you become closer to the, your due date, um, you should do it less frequently. Like you can still do it, but just do it less frequently because you do have extra, extra fluids. Um, and that sometimes can cause like a UTI or something. So just be careful with that. Um, you can definitely partake in it and stuff like that, okay? <laughs> That is it for my pregnancy advice and my pregnancy experience. Hope that this helped um, someone out there that is pregnant, that wants to become pregnant. Um, this is for all my young parents out there as well. Um, and yeah, so I will see you guys in the next video. Like always, do not forget to, to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.